Good evening, good evening, good evening. That clock on the wall is saying seven o'clock. So I need you to move quickly. The king's business demands or requires haste. So let's make haste. Come on, let's make haste tonight. Move as quickly as you can. We have so much to give to impart to enlighten you about tonight, and I want you to move quickly. We only have a 30-minute window, so I need you to move fast, and I need you to move quickly. I want you to get on the phone, text somebody, call somebody, email them if you have to. Come on, phone tree, let's rise, take our place, text somebody real quickly, or even call them if you have to, because tonight we're going to get into this word and this word going to get into us. Remember, the Bible declares that iron sharpening iron. I'm Bishop Van Sharp. I'm the pastor and founder of one of the greatest churches in all the world, Newness of Life Christian Center. It is our honor, it is our privilege, it is our thrill to be here with you tonight. So let us move quickly tonight and hear what thus said the Lord. Let's get ready tonight. And we're going to have a word of prayer and go into tonight's teaching. Father, thank you tonight that you are our master. You are our savior. You are the one that we can count on no matter what we face. So tonight we thank you for wisdom, knowledge and understanding. We thank you for the spirit of revelation moving and flowing tonight. And we glorify you for healing the sick touching lives, changing us from glory to glory by your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Shout out to all NOLCC and all Facebook family. Thank you so much for those of you who write us and are ordering books and on taking care of information. We so appreciate you. We love you. Happy birthday again to all of you January people. A special shout out tonight to Sister Iris White. That's right. Iris White, happy birthday to you. I know the White family, Elder White and family has taken good care of you today and made you feel as special as we truly think you are. We appreciate you and all the work you do at Newness of Life Christian Center as the board secretary and other things. We thank God for you. So happy birthday to you, Sister Iris White. Y'all give a shout out to her. Uh, give her a call if you are part of Newness of Life Christian Center or if you know that woman of God. All right. I am going to read a little bit of a letter that I received and maybe I'll do some other uh, on some other programs, read some of the letters we've been receiving. But this one right here touched my heart. It says, hi, Bishop. Just wanted to thank you so much for your teaching. It has really helped me in so many ways. Uh, so please stay on Facebook. <laughs> You're reaching so many people. I want to order, of course, they order some books and uh, said, God bless you. And uh, thank God. Just pray that they'll be all that God wants them to be. We appreciate that nice little letter and note. And of course, again, we've written 13 books and you can get many of them. We'll talk about them in a few minutes. But let's go into the word tonight. And we're talking about what? Powerful thinking makes what? Powerful living. We want to live powerfully. And in order to do that, we have to think powerfully. So we're talking about powerful thinking makes powerful living. And we said that the way that you and I think, this is part five of this teaching. I want to make sure you understand that we've already covered many, some of this in part one, two, three, and four. But this is part five of the teaching. And we said that the way that you and I think affects the way that you and I live. That's why each and every day you need some alone time, some quiet time, some time when you by yourself in the car somewhere because your thoughts need to go uninterrupted. And I'll, I'll say more about that in a few minutes. Listen at Proverbs 4 and 23. Proverbs 4 and 23 says, keep thine, keep thy heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. In other words, God and protect your heart, your spirit. With all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Now, let me read that to you in today's English version. And this is where we draw our message from. Today's English version says, be careful how you think. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. 
Let me say it again. Be careful how you think. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. Remember the Bible says in the book of Proverbs also as a man thinketh in his heart, so he is or so is he. So our thoughts are very, very important. We have to guard and protect them. Amen. And know how to get the right thoughts in us. We said that one person said this. He who controls the mind controls the behind. In other words, you're going to move in the direction of your thoughts. We gave you a quote by Dr. A.R. Bernard that said the quality of your thinking determines the quality of your life. So we understand how important it is for us to have the right kind of thinking. The Bible also says in the book of Romans chapter 12, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. And uh, in the Amplified Classic version, it speaks of the fact that we're not to conform to this age or fashion or adapt ourselves to the external or superficial customs of this age, but be transformed or changed by the entire renewal of our mind is new ideas and it's new attitude. Now, you know, we've been talking about fat, faithful, having the right attitude and being teachable. So our attitude and everything, amen, is connected to how we are thinking. If we don't have the right kind of thinking, we're not going to have the right attitude. So we know how important our thoughts are. So we got to guard them. We said you cannot change your quality of life until you change your quality of thought. That's a powerful statement right there. You cannot change your quality of life until you change your quality of thought. All right. Now, we said, how do you get powerful thoughts? We gave you these quick three reasons. You said we got to feed your mind. I mean, free your mind. First of all, free your mind. Then you got to focus your mind. And then, of course, you got to feed your mind. What? Free your mind. Focus your mind. And feed your mind. And we said that wrong thinking, wrong thinking comes from the thoughts of the old man, the old person you used to be. That's why you got to put new ideas in your head, new way of thinking in your mind so you can live differently. So it can be changed into another being. Go through a metamorphosis like a caterpillar changing into a butterfly. That's how your life can change based on you being born again. And you now renewing your mind. We said that also wrong thinking comes from Satan. Satan will throw thoughts at you. And that's why you got to cast down wicked imaginations, evil imaginations, evil thoughts. Not that you came up with them and it didn't even come from your old self. It's just thoughts that Satan is trying to bombard or invade your mind with. And you can't listen to the voice of Satan. He tried it with Jesus. So if you know if he tried it with Jesus, he's going to try it with you and I. He told Jesus, if you be the son of God, command these stones to be made bread. If you be the son of God, cast yourself off this pinnacle. He continually attacked the mind and the person of Jesus. So we know that if he did it to the son of God, he's going to do it to us because we are now the sons of God. Number three, we said that thoughts come from the world's value system and the world's value system or the world or those that are in the world will constantly try to bombard our lives with their thinking. They do it through their music. They do it through their movies. They do it through the television or the movie theater. Amen. Or through cussing and doing other things that they try to appeal to or try to appeal, appear to us like they're having a lot of fun so we can be enticed by it and take on their value system. Look at 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 through 17 in the Message Bible. We know in the King James Version, it tells us, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. All that's in the world, amen, is the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. These things are not of the Father. But in the message translation, it says, don't love the world's ways. 
don't love the world's goods. Love of the world, watch this, squeezes out love for the father. Practically, everything that goes on in the world, wanting your own way, wanting everything for yourself, wanting to appear important, has nothing to do with the father. Notice your King James said the lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, the pride of life. This message Bible said, wanting your own way, want everything for yourself and want to appear important has nothing to do with the father. It just isolates you from him. The world and all is wanting, wanting and wanting is on the way out. But whoever does what God wants is set for eternity. So if we do the will of God. We know that we will abide with God forever. But what keeps people from doing the will of God? The world's way. So the world's way will always try to be thrown at us through television, media, through music and everything else. And we must not give place to the world's way. We mustn't fall in love with the father and shut out the world's way. Now, we said there are 10 types of thinking that we're going to deal with. 10 types, 10 in the scriptures deal with the number of responsibility. When Moses sent out those spies, he sent out 12, but 10 of them came back with a negative report. 10 of them did. Two of them came back with a good report. The Bible said by the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. So they had enough to establish the word of the Lord, which was for them to go up and possess the land. But they listened at the 10. These were 10 elders who came back with a report of unbelief. And it brought discouragement to the heart of Moses and discouragement to the heart of the people. So we want to give you 10 ways that we're looking at that is good and powerful because powerful thinking makes powerful living. The way you've been thinking today has had an effect on you more than anything else. The way you've been thinking and every single day we have thousands of thoughts and we need to know how to control our thinking. Now, Proverbs 16 and three, listen at Proverbs 16 and three. It says, commit thy works unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established. This is powerful. If we commit our works unto the Lord, commit our doings and our deeds unto the Lord, he said our thoughts will be established. Hallelujah. Because we want to look at these 10 ways of thinking. Number one was high level thinking. You want to be around people who think on, high, on a high level. Amen. That's why it's good for you to be around people who have a master's degree, a doctor's degree, a college degree. Amen. Good to be around somebody who is full of the word. It's good to be around people who know how to govern and to lead. Why? Because they are going to have a high level of thinking. And high level thinkers are going to help you and I to think on a high level. You don't be around people who are always jesting, always joking, always got something foolish and stupid to say. There's a time to laugh. There's a time to uh, uh, smile and grin. But then there's a time for you and I to be challenged in the way we think. And you need to have people around you who will challenge your thinking, who are high level thinking thinkers. Number two, we talked about sober and faith thinking. You got to have a sober mind in this hour in which we live and you need to be continually using your faith. The just shall live by his faith. So we understand we walk by faith, not by sight. So we need to be thinking soberly. That's why, amen, your inner circle or the people you run with, amen, can't be a bunch of crackheads can't be a bunch of winos. Yes, you love people who are on drugs. Yes, you love people who are, are drinking wine because you once participated in such. 
But at the same time, you understand that when you were introduced to a better way, when you were introduced to a way of doing things differently, you bought into that and you came out of that old way of doing things because you got to be around sober minded people and people who are not doubting, who are not doubting doing it God's way, who are not doubting going to the house of God. They believe that it will pay off. The saints of old, you sing a song all the time. Payday is coming out the wow. Put your time in because payday is coming out the wow. I mean, the church will go wow. We will be praising God and everything because that song ministered hope and ministered life to us. It was telling us, put your time in. Put your time in in going to the house of God. Put your time in in doing what's right in the sight of God. Why? Because payday is coming out the wild. Hallelujah. And of course, amen, they didn't have the revelation that we got now that payday not only is over yonder, but God rewards us here and now. He'll give us 100 fold in this time and in the life to come everlasting life. So we need to be sober. The Bible said, be vigilant, be sober, because your adversary, the devil, is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. The Bible talks about us having a sober mind. Number three, godly or righteous thinking. We got to have godly and righteous thinking. The Bible said righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Number four, forward thinking. We got to have forward thinking. These are the type of thinking that makes powerful thinking that makes for powerful living. You will never be a powerful person if you don't know how to keep moving forward, to keep going forward, to keep forging ahead, to not look back. Lot's wife, who was told and who was warned, her and her family, Lot and his family were warned, amen, to get out of the city and not to look back. But Lot's wife looked back and she became a pillar of salt. And Jesus, during his earthly ministry, said, remember Lot's wife. In other words, don't look back. Don't be a person who starts putting his hand to this plow and then look back because you're not fit for the kingdom of God. Forward thinkers, watch this, is important, having a forward mind. Paul said, this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reach forth unto those things which are before. We need to stop looking back at who hurt you and I, who said what to you and I, and who did what to you and I. We need to reach, to be reaching and grabbing for our future. Did you hear what I just said? Reaching and grabbing for our future. Not always reminiscing on the past. Past hurt, past pain. Who did what? Who said what? Amen. You have to learn how to train your mind to move forward in God. Somebody say, I can't do it. I can't do it. I just can't forget it. Yes, you can. It's going to take work. It's going to take you getting in the word. It's going to take you shutting off the television set and watching it hour after hour after hour and being a diligent student in the word of God. Hallelujah. You have to get off the phone, stop texting so much and get in the word and renew your mind and move forward in God. Listen. Because the devil is not afraid of where you and I have been. He is afraid of where you and I are going. Your past is not a threat to the devil. What you've done, you've already done. What you've accomplished, you've already accomplished. But the devil is afraid of your destiny. He's afraid of where you're going. So he got to use something to hinder you. And if you're always looking back, can you imagine if you drive a car? And you keep looking back. The only time you look back is when you're moving backwards. Whenever you got to back the car up or every now and then you may glance in your rearview mirror because you're trying to see who's behind you. But most of your time is spent driving, looking forward. 
Every now and then you glance and use your side mirror and your back mirror, but most of your time is spent moving forward, driving forward, making some progress. And if you're going to make progress in the spirit, most of your time got to be thinking forward, not thinking about yesterday, but thinking about your future, thinking about where God's carrying you, thinking about what God's doing next in your life. What's next for you? What is God about to do for you? Glory to God. All right. Number five, we talked about mature thinking, mature thinking. This is very, very important because if you are listening at mature voices, your thinking will become mature. This is very important that you hear mature voices. My wife and I, we, we may look young, but we've been doing this a while. Hallelujah. A novice, a new convert. Amen. If all you're listening to is what new converts have to say about God and what they're saying about the things of God, you're not going to have mature thinking. Glory to God. That's why when you listen at mature voices, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers, I'm not talking about those who are not solid, but those who have been what? Faithful. Because I told you fat, F-A-T, faithful, having the right attitude and teachable is very, very important. Once you hear from faithful voices, voices that been in the kingdom, voices that have been tried, voices that have been proven throughout the years, voices that you know, know the word of God, have understanding of the word of God, have revelation of the word of God, glory to God. Then you don't go and take and listen at a mature voice and then go and talk to those that are immature and think you're going to have mature thinking. No, it won't happen that way. We listen at the voice of God because he's called the ancient of days. He knows what he's doing. So when people come out with some new fad, new style that doesn't line up with the word of God, some new thing, they think they're right with man with man. Now they're even uh, changing the way they look, changing their exterior, changing their body parts. Well, we ain't getting with that because why? When God created you, he did not make a mistake. You are fearfully and you are wonderfully made. You were made and created in the likeness of God and God created male and female. So if he created you a male, then he knew exactly what he's doing. We need some mature thinkers in the kingdom. Amen. Who knows exactly what they're doing, exactly what they're saying. Now, listen, just because you're mature and have mature thinking in the secular world, that doesn't mean you have mature thinking in the kingdom. For example, I was 19 years old when I came to Christ. Now, everybody, no matter how old they are, when they come to Christ, they start out as a babe in Christ and they have to grow. They have to mature. They have to develop. Well, you may be 50 years old and just getting saved. Well, what that make you in the kingdom? A babe in Christ, a babe as it relates to the spiritual world. You're not a babe as it relates to the natural world, but you are a babe as it relates to the spiritual world. So you have to have a mind set to be teachable, to learn and to grow and to be governed by spiritual things more than natural things. Now, it's your fault and you are to blame for it taking so long for you to come and give your life to Christ. So don't get mad at nobody. Amen. But yourself. But be willing to forgive yourself, move on, at least you're in it now, but know where you are in the spirit. So a lot of times what happened, amen, people don't give people a chance to prove themselves in the spirit world because they had some type of prestige in the natural world. But the natural world and the spiritual world are two different things. You got to understand that. Spiritual things and natural things are not the same. Spiritual things hold a higher priority and 
dominate and rule over the natural world. Well, that's for another day. Let me move on to number six. And I'll start with number six tonight. I didn't get as far as I would like to have, but it's I only got 30 minutes. Proactive thinking, proactive thinking. A lot of people are reacting. They are reacting thinkers. They are reacting. They always react. Well, it's time to pray. Why do they say it's time to pray? Call the devil. Look like he's doing something in their lives. You have to be proactive. Proactive people pray every day, no matter what it looks like, no matter how life is going. They're never reacting. They are proactive. The disciples, they they were proactive when they saw what the people were doing against them. They said, Lord, behold, their threatenings and grant unto your servants that signs and wonders be done in, through your holy child, Jesus. And they preached the word of God more boldly. They didn't react and start saying, well, they doing this. We must stop. No, they stay proactive because their proactivity caused the enemy to come up against them. See, it's what you're doing that's making the devil react to you. You're not reacting to him. He's reacting to you. He's bringing something against you because you're doing something for the Lord. Anybody who's doing something for the Lord will experience attacks from the enemy. But stay in a proactive mode. Don't get and become a reactive saint. Reactive people, they cry, whine, and act depressed because trouble shows up. Proactive people sees trouble as a sign they moving in the right direction. And they keep moving forward and they let nothing stop them because they are forward thinkers. Their mind is in the future. Their mind is in where? The future of what God is saying. They stay ahead. Remember, God is not waiting for the devil to do something before he moves. God is way out front of the enemy. God is a God of foreknowledge. He's a proactive thinker. He already knows what the devil going to try before the devil ever tries it. And he's way out in front of the devil. And he wants you and I to stay in a proactive mode. Keep it moving. I like that what Pastor Mal, Pastor Mal always said. Keep it moving, man. Keep it moving. Glory to God. Even when the devil tried to do something against your children, or against somebody you love, you keep it moving. You don't stop moving. You keep it moving. You keep moving because you are a proactive thinker. I'm out of time, not out of message, but I got to stop because on Thursday night, I only give you 30 minutes. So I got to quit. Our 30 minutes is up. It's 728 now by my uh, watch and I got to stop. Well, well, we'll pick up again. We're just on number six. I got some more to give you as we're talking about powerful thinking makes powerful living. Hallelujah. Let's practice this. Let's practice being a mature thinker. Glory to God. We don't nobody like me. That's immature thinking. God is love. He wants you to love everybody. Come on. Think mature. Well, I tell you, I'm having so much. No, that's backwards thinking. You need to be a forward thinker. Come on. Let's think. In, let's think soberly. Let's think in faith. Hallelujah. Remember, every Tuesday night, we're here on this platform at 730 to 830. Every Thursday night, sharp points take place, amen, from 7 o'clock to 7.30. Every Sunday morning, we're back in the building now, but because of the snow and all these recent climate situations, amen, we are right here each and every Sunday morning at 10.30, amen, and hopefully we'll be back this Sunday. If not, we will still be on this platform at 10.30. Either way, as well as YouTube, we'll be on YouTube at 1030 and uh, Facebook Live at 1030. All right. But you'll be listening out if you're a member of Newness of Life Christian Center or if you're a person who wants to come and join us in the Power Pack services. Be listening out. Amen. I'll be watching Facebook. We will let you know. Amen. As it relates to what we're doing this Sunday. All right. Don't forget to be praying for Pastor Lisa Rayner. She lost her husband and we're supposed to eulogize. Amen. 
that uh, preach at the eulogy on this Saturday at 10 o'clock is the time of the viewing and at 11 o'clock is the time when the service begins. So be praying for uh, for the, for her and that family. Also, amen, continue to pray for these other families and other people who are losing their loved ones. You and I have a book here that we can give to people and help people out. It's called Death, A Need to Understand. I'm telling you, so many people are blaming God, thinking God is hurting them thinking God is taking their loved ones, thinking God has caused this pandemic. Nothing is further from the truth. We need to know that the truth will make people free and God wants people to be saved. He is not willing that any man should perish. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Let's preach hope. Let's preach faith to people so they can walk in newness of life. All right. Also, amen, there are several ways to give. Yes, yes, thank you, Pastor Reese. All right, yes, if you're ordering any of our books, any of our material, call the office, call the ministry at 252-641-0098. We have 13 powerful books, and because of time, we, we can't tell you about all of them. We, every now and then, we tell you about one or two of them, but... You call our office and somebody will get back with you if you leave your number and, and let you know about the books. 252-641-0098. Or write the ministry. And when you write the ministry and if you're ordering books, uh, please specify which ones you want. But write the check out to Van Sharp. That's right. Van Sharp or Bishop Van Sharp because amen. These are books that we've written and uh, had nothing to do with the uh, ministry per se of it going to the ministry. But if you would like to be a blessing to our ministry, here's how you do it. You can send a check or a money order to Newness of Life Christian Center, P.O. Box 1462, Tarboro, North Carolina. The zip code is 27886. Newness of Life Christian Center, P.O. Box 1462, Tarboro, North Carolina, zip code 27886. That's how you give to Newness of Life Christian Center. Also, another way you can give to Newness of Life Christian Center, not one penny again goes to my wife and I. This is for Newness of Life Christian Center, is to download the Vanco mobile app. Download the Vanco, V-A-N-C-O mobile app. That's not my app. It's an app. Vanco mobile app. Type in Newness of Life Christian Center and the church uh, will pop up and you can give that way. Vanco mobile app. Type in Newness of Life Christian Center and the church will pop up. Now, if you would like to be a blessing to my wife and I, very simple, very easy to do. Again, this is not by force. This is by your choice. If you want to be a blessing to us, then what you do is go to your cash app. Go to your cash app, hit the dollar sign, and type in R-E-V-S-H-A-R-P-E. The dollar sign, R-E-V-S-H-A-R-P-E. And let me say this on behalf of my lovely wife and I, we appreciate many of you who do that. Thank you so very, very much. And we know that some of you are testifying that Pastor Bishop, we sold this, and boom, Miracles begin to break out. God begin to multiply the seed that I sow because you cannot sow good seed in good ground without getting back a good harvest. It's impossible. Now, some people, they wanted to come back the same day or the next day. Sometimes that happens. But whether it happens the next day or five weeks from now, it will come at an opportune time. And God has already set a time in your life to bless you for that seed that you begin to sow. Sometime I've sown seeds and been a blessing to people. Amen. It didn't come back the next day. It didn't come back the same day. But hey, down the line, kapow, that seed brought me to a place of a harvest. I'm telling you, God knows how to do it. So be a blessing to us by going to your cash app, hit the dollar sign, R-E-V-S-H-A-R-P. God will multiply your life. Also, again, if you're calling 
to order the books, call the ministry at 252-641-0098 or write, write to P.O. Box 1462 Tarboro, North Carolina. But again, if you're writing out a check for one of the books that you want to order, you have to write it out to Van Sharp. OK, write out to Van Sharp. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate you for watching tonight. Amen. Don't forget to hit the like button, hit the share button, hit the follow button. So every time when we come on, you will be right there with us. Hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the follow button and hit that share button so that others that are connected with you will be able to hear the word of the Lord. I'm telling you this Sunday morning, you don't want to miss the word of the Lord as we continue to teach you about this is the year where God wants to make you fat, fat spiritually and fat in a materialistic, natural way. God wants you to have an abundance this year. So don't doubt it. Mix your faith with us as we walk you through this great, great teaching. Go back over and listen at the other teachings we've done thus far Call FAT, F-A-T, being faithful, having the right attitude and being teachable. That's what's going to get you fat in the spirit and get you fat in your pocketbook. God bless you. Shout out to everybody again. Shout out to Sister Iris White. Happy, happy birthday, Sister Iris. We love you. And may God's choices, blessings rest on your life. Have a blessed night, everybody.